welcome on in. Mad Valid Mike is back. Welcome to the Mad Valid Mike podcast. This is episode 15. Give me that hawk tour. Yes, yes, I have joined that bandwagon. That young lady, we'll get to her in a minute. We'll get to her in a minute. Uh, greetings. Is everyone good? Vibe check? Is that something the young kids say? Sure. Sure, why not? We are going to get right in to episode 15. I got a few new segments for you that I'm hoping make you laugh. Or at least you'll be entertained in some way. Sure, sure. Um, The first segment we'll go into is No Bingo Gringo. Then we have Meanwhile in Florida. A lot of strange things happen in Florida. Uh, The final segment will be called Hodgepodge. Hodgepodge is just basically all these note cards here. I've written, uh, there's probably about 50 or 60 things I've written, just random things on the note card. I will shuffle them, and then I will pick one out, and I will uh, I will talk about whatever's on that card. For instance, let's just pick this one. This one says flopping. This refers to sports, pretty much. Uh, basketball, hockey, football, especially soccer. Stop flopping. You look ridiculous, Where, especially in soccer, where... Uh, I need a sound effect for a crashing glass there. In soccer, when when somebody barely touches your ankle and you go flying, you're writhing in pain, and the guy gets the car, the whistle, whatever, you're still writhing in pain, then eh, roughly 22 seconds later, you're sprinting full speed like you've never ran that fast before in your life trying to score a goal. Hate it. So anyway, there's uh, 49 other stuff, things listed on the card that I can't wait to get into. That's HodgePodge. We also have a very, very big announcement at the end of this show. There's a little teaser for you. Um, And it concerns White Guy John. But let's start off with the reason I named episode 15. Give me that hawk tour. There's a young woman. If you have not been on the internet or social media in the last four or five days for at least 10 seconds. Uh, You will not know what I'm talking about, but anybody with basically a pulse kind of knows this latest viral meme or viral video. It's a young lady. She's very cute. Uh, Looks very fun. Looks kind of naughty. She is talking about uh, oral sex in a way. And it has gone crazy. There are memes on top of her meme Memes on top of the memes on top of the memes, smash-ups, dub smashes, all sorts of videos. I believe somebody is, hopefully she's profiting, but somebody's profiting. There's Hawk Tua hats and shirts and mugs, I'm guessing, and hoodies, all that good stuff. It went viral. The reason why I named it that was even though I, I, like I've mentioned a couple times on a few episodes, I could really use some female attention, and especially in the Hawk Tua region. But (laughs) the reason why I picked that, other than to draw some eyeballs and jump on that bandwagon of clickbait, is that I'm looking for my viral moment. She went viral for a bunch of reasons, but... I'm looking for a different kind of viral moment where maybe something I say is funny today. We'll see. I, I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Well, s- s- snap myself out of it. Let's go right into uh, segment one. I think I actually have a, sure. I actually have a, um, yeah, that was a loud, uh, a loud sound going into this, the swoosh. Going from one segment to the next. No bingo gringo. I have heard quite a bit in the last few months, in the last year or two. I didn't have that on my bingo card for this week. I didn't have that. So we're doing no bingo gringo. I'm the gringo and no bingo, meaning I did not have any of this stuff on my bingo card. And 
I've seen some of this stuff happen in the last few days, the last month or so. Get to get it off my chest. I did not have J.J. Redick becoming the head coach of the Lakers on my bingo card, nor did I have him dropping the F-bomb twice in his initial press conference on my bingo card. No experience whatsoever. I will say I've seen a bunch of backlash from all sorts of areas, all sorts of different people saying that the Lakers absolutely shouldn't hire him. He has no experience. A guy like Sam Cassell, who's such a great basketball mind, a, a an all-star, a championship winner, who's been an assistant coach for almost two decades now. Hey, the Lakers can hire whoever they want. And obviously they're not doing it very well because I believe they've had eight coaches in the last 15 years. So that's number one. Number two, I mentioned this on a Facebook post. I saw a baby robin fall out of its nest as I was cutting my grass in the backyard and trying to learn to fly and all that stuff. And I'm just cutting my grass and I see it kind of limp over to my sliding glass door and almost like scratch at it. It was really, really hot that day. I'm my guess. I am in no way, shape or form a avian expert or a veterinarian, even <laughs> amateur. No, I'm guessing it was just super hot and maybe it felt air conditioning on the other side of my door. I don't know, but I was distracted. I'm like, yeah, maybe I should let it in. And then I'm like, oh, it's going to poop everywhere. It's going to be flying everywhere, blah, blah, blah. It's going to, the dogs are going to be crazy. And I got distracted. So I, I continue cutting my grass and I see the bird is a couple moments later, it's gone from the door. I'm like, oh, good. It must have learned how to fly in those seven seconds or took off somewhere. And then I'm going back and I see the, the dead bird, that bird dead in a part of the grass I just mowed. So felt bad. I, I, I'm not a big fan of death. And I feel like I could have let it in and just dealt with whatever poop or whatever, see if it was actually the, the temperature, if it needed water. Or, I could have nursed it back to health. I, maybe not. Maybe it, I let it in and it dies on my carpet. And then... Uh, Hobbs gets a hold. Hobbs gets a hold of the smell or the odor and just takes it down for dinner. I don't know, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I do live with a killer. I might call Hobbs killer from now on, but I didn't do that. And then I go to work just a few hours later, and two more robins fall out of their nest and onto their patio. And there's people all over the place. Oh my god, we got to protect the birds. We, we got to call uh, aviary, and we got to call the national wildlife which somebody did. I think one of our managers did. And they're like, we're not, if it's not a threat to anybody, we're not coming out. Like, so I did not have, and then later when I came home after the shift, another baby bird, this one was interesting though. This one fell out of its nest and was a lot more lively than the one earlier in the day. And its parents were in tow where I felt I was about to be dive bombed because I went near it. The dogs were outside. I, I put the dogs inside because I don't want anybody harming the thing. And the birds, there was a ton of robins, not just the parents, but maybe relatives, aunts and uncles flying around, protecting that little bird. So that was great. And it kind of went to a corner of the yard and I did some other stuff and it, it was no longer there a little while later. So that bird made it, I believe. And I've seen a bunch of small birds. So on my bigger card, long story short, <laughs> I did not have myself in a matter of 12 hours seeing four different baby robins fall out of a nest. I don't think I've seen one in 48 years, much less four in the span of 12 to 15 hours. Uh yeah. So, uh, th did any of you laugh at that? Maybe you didn't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
So maybe maybe he didn't laugh at it. Whatever. But that's fine. That that's fine. <laughs> it's somebody, I think so. Somebody just uh, jumped off a bridge after that segment. I guess with that. So uh, two more things in my bingo card that I did not have. Lucas Oil Stadium here in Indy built three Olympic size pools for the Olympic swimming trials for the upcoming Olympics on the Lucas Oil Field where the Colts play. I did not have that on my bingo card, but I also didn't have on my bingo card that they've been doing this for five years at different venues. And this is how they do a lot of the the trials because it brings in so many fans that the smaller venues just don't work. So they moved it from last year it was in Omaha and they moved it to Lucas Oil because they could they could do more, they could bring in more people. Uh, Indianapolis convinced them that they're really good at big events, which I think they are. And it's supposed to have brought in a hundred million dollars in revenue uh, uh, of some kind. They built from the ground from scratch two fifty millimeter or two fifty meter pools. One is for competition, one's for warm up, and then another twenty five meter warm up pool. Pretty impressive stuff if you look that up online. Not funny all that much, <laughs> but pretty impressive. And I did not have that on my bingo card. Also, I did not have on my bingo card was the three following male celebrities. I don't dislike them so much, but Tom Cruise. <laughs> Top Gun Maverick, dude. Hugh Grant, Hugh Grant, yeah, he had a interesting interaction with a uh, lady of the night, I guess you could say. And then Ashton Kutcher, Ashton Kutcher, who was known for punked in, is it Mila Kunis or Mila Kunis? I think it's Mila Kunis. So Tom Cruise, Hugh Grant, and Ashton Kutcher were all dancing in the same celebrity suite, rich person's area of a Taylor Swift concert in London. I did not, on my bingo card, have those three together at a concert together in London together and all knowing Taylor Swift lyrics. That young lady has taken over the planet. Very impressive what she has done with her talents, her abilities, her marketing. I, I don't like that she's involved with football. I still... I dare you, Taylor Swift. I still th- dare you to marry Travis Kelsey, who appeared in one of your shows in a, I guess, a tuxedo and a top hat. I, I know way too much about this already. But yeah, get married. um, Or not, whatever. So that was no bingo gringo, okay? We are now moving on to the next segment, which is Meanwhile in Florida. I went to University of Florida, as most of you know, anybody that knows me, anybody that watches this show, I'm a big Florida Gator fan. There, I lived there for five years. My parents lived in Fort Myers when I was going to school in Gainesville. My sister went to University of South Florida in Tampa for four or five years. I think she finished in four. So we're all down there for a significant part of time, and my parents are now living there permanently. There's a lot of strange stuff that happens in Florida. When you turn on a Florida news program, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in afternoon or late night, usually they don't lead with what bleeds unless the bleeding comes from an animal. (laughs) They love animals now, which is fine. That's great. But meanwhile in Florida, I came across this article since 2013, not annually, but since 2013, I believe they've had six Python challenges in Florida. Oh, some of you have heard of it? Are, are some of you hunters or you're not? Okay. Well, they have a python challenge in Florida since 2013. They had one last year and a couple of years before that, they're going to have one this year in 2024 from August 9th to August 18th. The python challenge is simply this. They are looking for, oh, what the hell just happened there? Oh, oh, my producer. Ugh, sorry, pop, sorry. Uh, they are the Python challenge. They are looking for hunters in this 
their time frame for a cash prize to remove all pretty much Burmese pythons, an invasive species, a non-native species, to the Florida Everglades. They're looking for people to remove them. And they will reward the winners who bring in the most pythons with cash rewards and, and, and other things. The reason why they need these Burmese pythons removed from the Everglades is that there are species that doesn't belong there. And for every one of them, I guess they can take out a hundred other different species from the area. And the Everglades is, from most accounts, a fascinating ecosystem where the preservationists do not want it disturbed. So rumor has it in the 1980s, people that had Burmese pythons as pets in Florida must have gotten sick of them and just discarded them near the Everglades. And they have since uh, obviously procreated and, and, and all that good stuff. And every year, it looks like they remove about 200 to 225 pythons in this challenge. The interesting thing about this segment and meanwhile in Florida is the way that Florida, the UF, the University of Florida has gotten involved, as is the Florida Wildlife Conserve, in judging and color coding how people kill the pythons and bring them in uh, to claim. <laughs> yeah, so you, the following rule you cannot do the following things. There is no shooting of the pythons in this competition, there's no freezing them. Apparently, you catch a python and you freeze it, and it, that's a way to kill it. Uh, there's no running over it by a car. And these are all, they're, when they bring them in, they have judges, like multiple judges. The only way you can get your python accounted for in your tally is pithing. They, they are very interested in not having any of these snakes feel any pain, which is... Which is kind of funny to me. Uh, <laughs> and pithing is basically the manual destruction of the snake's brain. And you do so with a screwdriver, a pick, or a spike. And it's jammed into the snake's head. Uh, but you have to render it conscious first by a captive bolt or an air gun. <laughs> like... And, you know, in this article I'm reading, if you're not a professional, we don't suggest you. Well, no shit. I'm not going to go out there. My, like, are you, <laughs> I'm not going out there if I'm not a professional. If anybody's not a professional and they go out there, Darwin, I think you should take over. I really do. Uh, they also want a detailed video on it. Now in 2024, just about everybody has a cell phone, a video, you know, smartphone, uh, access to quick and easy Videoing and things. Just craziness. Absolutely crazy. 209 pythons were removed in 2023. There were a thousand competitors from all over the planet that came. 40 were flagged. All right. I mean, that's just that that was main meanwhile in Florida. Just just a crazy story of Florida, I guess. Uh they care, they love their manatees down there. They love just all sorts of critters. I have a feeling I'm going to get killed by an alligator at some point. What? Are you... You're happy about that? I just find it... It would be ironic, maybe, if that's the definition, that an alligator takes me out. I'm thinking about moving to Florida at some point to be closer to mom and dad and help them through their golden years should they need assistance. And if I outlive them, I... I'm hoping I do. Uh, <laughs> does that laugh mean you don't think I'm good? Anyway, uh, yeah, just a uh, good times. Very good times. That's my awkward. That's an awkward pause. So let's let let's. Shall we move on? Shall we move on? Yeah, let's move on. We're going to the final segment of the day, which is called Hodgepodge. 
hodgepodge. I kind of went into it earlier on in the episode, at the very beginning, at the top. Um, I just wrote a bunch of things on these note cards here. Just a bunch of different things that have come across my mind. We're going to go ahead and shuffle these. We're just going to pick them out over, you know, randomly and just kind of spew out my thoughts, my opinions, orate, maybe opine, if you will. All right. First one I see here is this. Can you read that? It says, crosses and memorials on the side of the road. This is kind of a, uh, it's kind of a morbid. I don't like starting off with this, but this is what came up first. I don't like it. I absolutely do not like it. Cemeteries are for that. Cemeteries are for places for those that are no longer in their body, their spirit has moved on to a different dimension or a different place. And that's where you can go and mourn and you can celebrate them or give them gifts or reminisce with them. Lots of, in 2024, there's been lots of people that have died tragically or not tragically in millions and millions of places. I prefer it. It does touch my heart like, oh, you know, if I see one and I'm driving either on a highway or a side street or anything in between. And I see a little cross there and there's flowers there. I, I know. I, death sucks. It absolutely sucks. But I really don't think there should be crosses and memorials all over just regular parts of the... That's just That's just me. This is where I could have a breaking glass uh, sound effect. Oh, that didn't work at all. This is awful. David Letterman would not be proud. How about this? How about I just crumple it up and throw it? All right, let's 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 uh, let's shuffle these up. Shuffle them up. And I'll pick one from random, and we'll move on. What do you think? All right, what does this one say? This was random. What does this one say? This one's favorite Chinese food. Shit, I'll tell you right now, my mom and dad will know immediately. It is cashew chicken with white rice. Oh, it is delicious. What was the name? I can't remember the name of the Chinese restaurant in Buffalo Grove, Illinois. Oh my God, I can't believe I don't remember. I do remember their cashew chicken and we had the same waiter every day. I know how you feel, buddy. It is, uh, it's a tough thing to get out of. <laughs> um, cashew chicken. I do like sweet and sour chicken as well. Not a big fan of egg rolls just because I'm not really sure what's in there still after all these years. And I'll take a bite and it's never a complete, there's always something hanging off or a string or some kind of lettuce or cabbage or onion that's just hanging off. I can never get a clean bite of the onion rolls. So that, that, that was my favorite Chinese food. How about this one? How about, how about the next? Let's take a little look. Huh? Huh? What do you think? Is anybody having fun today out there? Anybody? Anybody? Let's see what we got. 23 minutes in. Sure. Sure I am. All right. That was random. Let's see what this is. What does this say? What does that say? Dating apps. Interesting. I've been on quite a few dating apps. And I do not like them. I have said a few times in the past, I would say I'm a four or a five. At, at time, if you take money out of the equation, which I have very little of, I'm a four or a five. If I were to get a bunch of money, millions of dollars somehow, I think the confidence that would ensue and the material goods around me and my swagger, if I had millions of dollars and maybe less stress, therefore, might bump me up to a seven, maybe, maybe a seven, depending on how millions, how many millions of dollars it is. I think I'm on four or five. I'm, I'm happy with what God gave me. Dating apps are not for four or five, not for males, men that are four or five. They are not. They are for women. And I end up being more pissed off after the five or six different 
subscriptions I tried, some of them I paid for, some of them I just did for free, in all sorts of different areas of the country, I not only do I not get any matches, they send me fake matches. Yes, fake matches. <laughs> and after a while, I would just, hey, you know, I get a message, hey, cutie, where are you from? And I would, and I knew, I would look at the picture, I'm like, there's no chance. It, but hope, hope abounds. So let's give it a shot. So I would say something back, and then at some point I would, they would ghost me or stuff. And then I decided from now on, if any ridiculously hot woman messages me on a dating app, my first question is going to be, what's your favorite color? Because the next 37 consecutive times, a hot, attractive, way younger woman messaged me <laughs> on Tinder or whatever. I think it was an eHarmony. Even eHarmony gave fake profiles. I would respond back, what's your favorite color? And the response, just about every single time, doing great. How are you? I'm from Atlanta. Where are you from? Nobody ever answered with their favorite color. <sighs> in dating apps. I sent, the last time participating in dating apps, I sent heavily worded emails to four of them in which I demanded my money back from the ones that I had given 20 bucks to, which they did respond with a refund, but also said I'm no longer able to use their service, which is fine. That one didn't go very far. Come on, crash. I should really find, I'm gonna find one right now, I think. If I, if I can find one right now, free window crashing sound effect. Sure, we're gonna look that up right now in live time. In live time, I will. Just, just hold on, just hold on. I'm looking, oh wait, I got a phone call. I got a phone call, hold on a second. Hold on a second. My producer's saying I got a phone call. Yeah, this is uh this is Mad Valid Mike. Is this Mad Valid Mike? Am I on the air? Hello? Yes. Yes, you are on the air. What you got? What's your name? This is Karen. I'm calling from Toledo, Ohio. Hello? Hello, Karen from Toledo, Ohio. I'm kind of in the middle of a podcast. What in God's name do you want? Well, I was just, <laughs> I was just listening in, and I heard you talk about dating apps. You're, you're not a four. Nah, you're like a three tops. Three. Why don't you get into the gym at some point? What is your? I, I've seen you on these dating apps. I don't know how you were ever in Toledo, Ohio, but. Maybe you you have your preferences out to like four or five hundred miles because you're so desperate. Anyway, get in the gym, eat more fruits and vegetables. Maybe do something with that rug up there. I mean, you gotta. All right, all right, all right. That's it, uh, producer producer Mick. Whatever your name is back there, get get Karen off the line. Karen, what what's wrong with you? That wasn't very nice. That wasn't very nice at all. I didn't like that at all, Karen. Oh. <laughs> there, there's my broken window. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. Uh, all right, we'll do uh, maybe one or two more of these and we'll get moving. Sure, let's do, let's do one or two more. So what's this one say? This is, this is going crazy, this is going crazy. Nope, 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 don't want that anymore. Don't want that, sure. Let's get back, okay, okay. Oh, all right, all right, I got you. What did this one say? The moon landing. Did uh, did we land on the did we land on the moon? Don't care. I do. Hold on. I do not care. All right, well, I tried. <laughs> uh, lots of dead air in this episode. I don't like the dead air at all. At all. Um, at all. So, 
Uh, let's let's do one. Let's do one more. Huh? Let's do one more of these. One more of these. All right. What does that say? Three things I want on a deserted island. I asked cousin Carl on last week's episode in our awkward question segment. What three things would he want if he was deserted on a island? A deserted island. And I kind of pondered it a little bit, so it's it's not really off the cuff anymore, but I, I did come up with three. Number one, I want some kind of very sophisticated, large Swiss Army knife. And it, the Swiss Army knife should have, like, at least 15 different gadgets, weapons on it, including a large knife. That's number one. Number two, I would like a best-selling book of how to survive on a deserted island. That's number two. And then number three, I would really like to have my guitar. Yes, yes. I love me some music. And I need a guitar probably with attached to said guitar an unlimited amount of strings and picks because I would probably break a lot of strings depending on how long I was able to survive. My guess is maybe three days, but maybe with the survival guide, I can read and that multifunctional Swiss army knife. Maybe, maybe I'd survive for a week. What's the over under? How long do you, how long do you think I would last? I am gaining more followers. I think I'm up to the upper teens now. So for those of you that are followers, I love you. Those are, you are not smash those subscribe buttons, smash those like buttons and start following me. It's entertaining. I'm going to get even better. I got more mics coming in. Uh, you know what? We're going to go into the, uh, the final part of this, uh, this little mm -hmm. show here. We're next week. Possibly in two, I think it's going to be in two weeks. It's going to be my next episode. It's going to be the return of White Guy John. And what is White Guy John going to bring to the table with me in two weeks on our episode 16? We have already begun forming a new political party. Yes, we are forming a new political party with a new political mascot. The name of the party our platform it is 2024 and it is the year of the presidential election and a bunch of other elections and it's pissing me off I can't stand what I've been hearing on both sides so we've decided it was John's idea and I was all for it I can't wait that's going to be in uh, in two weeks I have a bunch of purchases I have to make I really want to put a lot of effort into this, that episode because we might change the world with that episode. Other than that, I, I, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say. I, uh, maybe I'll do one more just for the, just for the fun of it. One more in closing, huh? Let's do one more in closing, a quick one. Nah, I didn't like that one. That was stupid. No, no. How about this? Nah, nah. 2020 will be on the next one. Let's do that. That would take too long. I, I had something. Oh, here we go. What does that say? Nieces and nephews. There is not a word for nieces and nephews. If somebody has a boy and a girl for their children, you call them children, or their grandchildren, or my aunts, my uncles. Now, obviously, those are gender specific, but. There's no word for nieces and nephews. I have two nieces and a nephew, and I always say my nieces and nephew. I think there should be a word for it. And what's the word going to be? Nephews. The new word for nieces and nephews combined is nephews. Thank you. Thank you very much. And until next time, this is Mad Valid Mike signing off. Peace. Be good. Do good.